the New York Malamars, this time for the week three pickums. Last week we went five and two for a eleven and three record overall, and with that we are going to get into the uh, very first game of the week. All right. So first off, we got the Frederick Klefkies coming off a win against Abbotsford, a uh, a pretty interesting game. Uh, a lot of uh, hacks involved in that one. And then uh, the Golden State Durants coming off of a win, beating the Chesnots 2-0. Uh, a very well-earned, hard-fought game. So uh, we go into this match looking at the matchup. And it, it becomes pretty clear that, uh, you know, the likes of uh, Rubber Room are pretty uh, dangerous for Klefkies if it's allowed to uh, set up effectively. Klefkies kind of has to... Uh, play around it uh, very meticulously in order to not get swept. Perhaps a, a tank chomp needs to come. I think uh, Spectre looks pretty decent here. You know, the Shadow Ball resists are uh, Greninja, who is maybe potentially going to lose its typing. Uh, and also Arbaliva, who is a Terra Captain now, so it could also Terra out of uh, being an immunity. Other than that, Shadow Ball spam is pretty free, and it also outspeeds everything on the opponent's side as well. So, uh, some sort of, you know, specs, or spe even just like Nasty Plot Spectre could potentially be a very dangerous late game cleaner for the Clef Keys. I think, uh, you know, Latios, there's Tinkaton for Latios, which is a, a pretty decent answer. Uh, obviously, if Lost Approach gets the Spadef drop, it's really not great, but, um... That's really the trick case for every Pokemon that's not a dark type. I think if like both Tinkaton and Quillfish come, then Latios can really be put in check. Um, I, I think this is a, an interesting matchup for the Durants. Great Tusk, I think, uh, has potential to do some cool stuff here. You know, it, it, it hits uh, Hisui, Samurai, it hits Hands, it hits Tinkaton. I worry that uh, like a Terra uh, Fairy Appleton uh could maybe hold it back i am imagining the eq probably does over 50 percent though or headlong rush at least but uh it would probably uh die to whatever grass move that the appleton goes for after i think breviary hisui is kind of interesting this game i'm worried about you know corphonite obviously but you could be tinted lens to prevent that and there's also two electrics so i don't think um Hurricane is as uh, spammable this game as it was potentially last week. I think that uh, when I look, I think there's a Tusk set, a setup set with uh, booster speed, ground move, ice move, rock move. That seems to have a really good matchup here because the only thing that he he wants to tear the Appleton if it comes in, but like you said, if it loses the grass typing, it's not going to take any type of boosted ground type attack very well. And then it almost might force him into bringing the Fortress because it, there's no reason for him not to carry the rock move because he doesn't really desperately need the fighting move for anything here, right? Yeah. Like unless he's because unless he's really worried about the Appleton, but he could just run ground ice. Uh, you know, bulk up and then a move to make sure Talonflame doesn't blank him. That's a really good set. I think Samurott can do something, right? So there's the Dark Resist is Tusk, but if you run Surf or Hydro Pump, that probably kills Tusk in one hit, right? Yeah, I mean, Razor Shell for sure, two hit KOs as well. Yeah, so, and even a defensive. Corvin, if it switches in on the razor shell and gets the defense drop, it probably can't take that many hits from that thing. So that seems like a pretty good mod in this game. I don't know what the set would be. Maybe you just SD. Um, hope the Corvinite comes in and hit it, and then once it's gone, you just spam razor shell for the rest of the game. So that seems like a pretty good set. He's he's forced into bringing Arbaliva, because if he doesn't bring Arbaliva, I mean, Spectre just wins this game, right? I guess it has to be, what, Scarf Latios? Because it outspeeds everything and just... Greninja can be Scarf and beat it if it's already in, right? But it's not going to switch in on more than a couple of Shadow Balls. And then if it subs on him and Draining Kiss, the game is just over, right? So you could bring this just standard sub-nasty plot to attack Spectre, and if it gets the sub up, I think it just 
wins for most positions. I believe it will beat it one on one in the long run, I think. But uh, even then, maybe you just bring Calm Mind for that reason and stop it from being able to break your sub. Um, the, I think Klefkies has the better matchups in general because I think Mixed Garchomp is pretty good because it really wants to be physically defensive Corviknight, right? Because it something has to try to stop Asui and Samurott, but then it probably can't take Fire Blasts from Chomp. So... I think that Durance seems to have a really good Tusk set that can probably just sweep the game. And Reverum can just sweep every week, right? So that's always a thing. But I think there's a really good Garchomp set. I think there's a good mixed Samurott set. I think just the ba the most basic Spectrier set just kind of runs this game over. He just has to do anything to the uh, Arbeliva. And I think it just runs through the whole team. It almost forces him into Revenge Killer Greninja or Latios, right? In this game. Yeah, he has to. He, he has to have a Scarfer. I think we've said this every week for Durant's because his team is like it's not necessarily slow, but it's not like the fastest thing in the world. He usually has to make one of his guys a Scarfer so that they can be like a revenge kind of uh, killer of some kind, uh, okay. in order to make it so that they don't get. Um, like completely swept by like one set or like completely overtaken and overrun by a really fast pokemon he did it uh oh, with, think, he did it with great yeah, success I last think, week yeah yeah i think that um klefki's being weak to tusk like a really basic setup set is bad but i think klefki's has more good guys and this just on the face of it like without going really in depth there's three basic sets that if he just brings the most basic thing i don't really durance can do things to play around it but he doesn't just have a check to any of these things because he can never bring the r believe in it can't take any damage or it probably isn't doing well against draining kiss and i don't know how i don't know what you think about whether it would be nasty plot or calm mind if he calm minds behind a sub i, I don't really know what the counterplay to that is yeah, Calm Mind can be very dangerous because Durant has a lot of special attackers. I mean, Greninja can be physical, but um, like like the main physical attackers are like Tusk and Rebogroom, who are two of your like key pieces to winning the game in the end. I think so. I don't know if you want to use them to break subs. So you're gonna try and want to break subs with some of your like special attackers like Arbaliba or Rabombi or uh, Latios, which uh, could end up putting you in a really bad position. Um. I, I think Tinkaton's pretty big this game, because if Tinkaton goes low early or goes down early, then Latios opens up a bit, and I think it could lead Latios to being in a really dangerous position for Klefkies. Um, yeah. Because uh, anytime there's like a, a, a Luster Purge uh, possibility of getting Spadef drops, it can really put a lot of pressure onto what Klefkies is trying to do. Because I, I do think like... Um, there is some potential uh, with that Latios uh, by just hammering away at Tinkaton with Latios with like Rabombi for example because then if Rabombi is also hammering away at Tinkaton because that's also the answer uh, maybe he needs to bring both steals this game but I don't really know if Fortress wants to come um, it, it the fire type on the opposing side is Croclore so you know maybe he brings Terrifier Rubber Room but if he's Terrifier Rubber Room yeah. Well, that's actually probably the correct answer is terrifying how referendum. Many, how many luster purges do you think Foratress can take? Uh, three? No. Uh, it depends on if it gets the death drop. If it switches in on one and gets the spadef drop, it'll die to the next one, in my opinion. If yeah, I had to, so... If I had to guess. And I don't know what's the... I feel like he wants offensive Greninja and offensive Tusk, so I don't know if he's bringing hazards this game, unless it's just thrown on a, a Scarf Greninja set. Um, I yeah. feel like the booster energy Tusk is so good here that any bringing anything, maybe he maybe he'll cook up a great way to sweep with River Room, but it seems like the win con, like you said, is either just pounding like Specs or Scarf Latios, hoping that he's afraid to switch in Hisui and Samurott. Um, and then positioning things for Tusk to get a sweep at the end, like making sure that he, because he, Klefki's has to bring Talonflame, Fortress, or Appleton, or else he just loses to Booster Speed Tusk. Um, assuming it can take one Shadow Ball, right? Because it will outspeed everything. And I don't think you want to be 
Scarf Samurott here. I think you want power because it's such a good breaker. Uh, Scarf Chomp, I guess if it's special, might be able to one-hit KO. And I think Spectre should be set up just because you have to get through the Arboliva. Um, so I don't know if there's an obvious Scarfer for Clef Keys. So uh, I think he's built into having to bring Fortress, Talonflame, or Appleton. I wouldn't bring more than one, but I think he needs at least one of them. Yeah, and I don't know how I feel about Quilfish coming. Just because I think Tinkaton needs to come, and I think Samurott and so a Spectre, Garchomp, Samurott should come, and Tinkaton should come. That's four, and then one of those three should come. That's five. So that's six slot. I think it, it could be uh, Quillfish, but I, I think he probably wants to bring Hands. If I had to guess, Hands isn't yeah. terrible hands, this game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he can always do everything. It, you right? know, it Tusk is the only thing that really checks him, but Tusk wants to attack. Yeah, because Hands, like, uh, outside of the top two, Latios and Great Tusk, Hands can literally live any move. It might even live, like, one Latios hit just because it's pretty fat. Uh, it, it would do, like, yeah. I'd have to imagine 90. It'd have to do a ton. But it, it lives anything. It can hit really strong back. Uh, Hands is really good at trading. It's really Because it, it's really hard to kill fast. It, it's really good at, like, just uh, sitting there. It doesn't get its health back. Like, it doesn't have recovery, but it does have Drain Punch. So it doesn't have like super yep. good recovery, but it, it can sit there and like Lantern and Thunderous don't appreciate hands. Arbeliva won't appreciate hands. Uh, uh Arbeliva's so, dying of hands one shot. So so I think like hands could come. Uh I, I do think like the offensive options on Durant's like kind of he can offensively check hands. Like hands isn't gonna sit there the yeah. whole game, but so uh, it, it's interesting to decide whether it's going to be that or Quillfish, because Quillfish's hazards, I imagine, aren't going to stay up very long. I think Corviknight's probably going to have Defog in this game. So yeah. or, so uh, uh, Quillfish would really be there for the Luster Purge immunity, I would be get it, guessing. So I, it, he needs yeah. to decide if Tinkaton's enough. It might be, because I think Tinkaton's a pretty decent Latios answer. So yeah. he needs to decide if Tinkaton's enough to take the Luster Purges. Yeah. I think if I was Clef, I think I like Clef. He's probably 55 45 in this game. But if I'm Clef, he's like, he's been playing an offensive game and that's his team. So I think he should have one or two checks to come in to hopefully get him an extra three turns. And then just try to get the chip you need to get Spectre in and just like blow holes with Garchomp, throw hands out mid game. Maybe just lead Samurott and put start, just apply pressure the whole time because Durant's team is super balanced. But it's not going to out offense him, and I don't know that it's defensive enough to withstand him for more than five or six strong hits. So I would just throw stuff at Durant's team and then see if he can survive Spectre at the end. Yeah, I think I agree with the 55 45. I do have a sinking feeling that this might end up being a great Tusk sweep, but I'll, I'll go it 55 can. It definitely yeah. can. I, I, it definitely I, can. I'll go 55 45 in favor of the Clef Keys. But I, I do think. There's a chance that like Great Tusk or Rebuff Room end up being very problematic and end up just winning the game. Uh, the Greninja yeah. also, I know he brings protein. Like I think he's brought it both weeks. The Greninja can be Battle Bond, and if it gets the Battle Bond, uh, it could be really scary. It could be really, really yeah. scary for Klefkies. He doesn't actually have like a great. It'd have to be hands probably. Hands are like Samurott. Uh, it has yeah. to come in and take a hit at plus one and then kill it back. But I think Samurott can't actually kill it back, so. It, it, or it must have Sacred Sword. So one of those two has to come in and take a hit. Especially because mm -hmm. you don't want Tinkaton to take it. So that could be dangerous as well. Alright, and moving on to the next game. We have the Muchen Embors versus the Pittsburgh Scizors. The battle of two 2-0 two teams. Uh, the Muchen beat the Malamars 3-0 last week. And uh, the Scizors beat Clombrook 2-0. Um... A very impressive showing from uh, Muchin last week, and uh, moving into this week, I kind of uh, really like uh, what they have uh, going on in terms of uh, Roaring Moon. Roaring Moon seems to really, really devastate the opponent. It can be, I think, just straight up Banded or Choice Scarf if you want to outspeed Darkrai, and you can U-turn and knock off a round, and really the only answer is to have Kumpei with Draining Kiss, and that's like kind of a temp answer, because if you're switching in and you're getting knocked off, that's really not great in my opinion. I, I think uh, Moon's matchup here is pretty decent all around. I, I do think on the other side, you know, the Darkrai answers for uh, Moochin are minimal. He actually has uh, one, like his, both his Dark Resists are 
offensive Pokemon. So I, I think like yeah. you, you would actually be switching Moon in on a Dark Pulse maybe, which could be problematic. Yeah, it's probably gonna, it's probably gonna be Mock. Right? Yeah, it has to be like a Salt Best Mock that comes in to take the, uh, or like Max Spideff Black Sludge. But uh, Darkrai also gets Psy Shock. So this Darkrai could be like, uh, if this Darkrai is like uh, set up, uh, Dark Pulse Psy Shock. And then, like, Ice Beam last move just to Ice hit Beam. Roaring Moon. Uh, yeah, yeah, Ice Beam. It, it, I think Darkrai actually is very, very dangerous. The more I look at it, I think Darkrai has a really uh, damning chance to sweep this game. Except for the fact, of course, Moochin has probably the strongest priority of any team. So he has Ice Shard on Mamo. He has Quick Attack on Terra Normal Zangus. He has Vacuum Wave on Keldeo. So he can always force it out, right? He can even if he loses a mon, he can go to one of these three strong guys. If it's at like sixty quick yeah. attack, Terra Normal probably kills. I, I'm guessing at like a hundred, Keldeo will kill with vacuum wave if it specs. But uh, you obviously yeah. have to play around Petron with that. Um, I don't know how much yeah. value Petron actually holds this game, other than with Zangus. I think I think it should maybe come just as the Zangus counter because Gate Zangus is such a dangerous Pokemon. But um, yeah. Like, Roaring Moon, it, 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 like, it doesn't take uh, 100% from knockoff, but it, Roaring Moon is one of the strongest knockoffs in the game. It will do, even to Petra, it will do, like, 70, unless you're Colbert. Yeah. Um, Swine Earthquakes will do over 50. You know, th these are really strong Pokemon. So, it's like, even even if it is Petra, th these are really, really strong Pokemon that you can't take the hits of. Uh, but yeah. for Pittsburgh, his win con is very easily Darkrai. I think Comfey should come just to, you know threaten uh roaring moon and it also threatens keldeo kind of just with the the priority draining kisses i would run i know this is a set that uh, i guess i guess it's not terra comfey so it's probably not as viable i i've run it before just choice specs the comfey and have you turned and just use it as a basically a priority procker because when, when priority draining kiss is really good against like roaring moon or keldeo and it can just be used to clean up essentially uh i kind of just like it as that uh I kind of just like using it as that sometimes. Um, in terms of like the Terra Captains for Pittsburgh, uh, Flamigo is kind of like a walled by Skarmory. Skarmory kind of puts it in a in a bit yeah, of a pack. And, and Zapdos. I, I think it's kind of limited. Tauros could be interesting. Um, like like a mixed Tauros, because Tauros gets Fire Blast, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, since back in the day. Fire Blast, Ice Beam, Tauros. Not, not, not terrible here. I don't hate that idea. Um, like, Fire Blast, Ice Beam, Zen Headbutt, mixed. Something like that, and then Normal Move. Um, I, I don't despise that. I think that has, uh, decent breaking potential. I do think he should try and bring Blastoise this game for the Rapid Spin, I think, because... Yeah, I think he has to bring Blastoise, because Keldeo destroys this team. Yeah, yeah, Keldeo is also very dangerous. The, the resists are, uh, well, obviously Wellspring's there, so, you know, you kind of have to, pre if it's going to be Specs, Keldeo, you have to predict. Um, and if it's got, if it's not going to be Specs, it, Ogre Pond actually is a pretty decent switch in, just because it outspeeds guaranteed. So, like, even if he goes for the, um, what's it called, the fighting move? Uh, the secret sword. If you outspeed... Because this could be like a, a a defensive wellspring actually, if it really wants to check Keldeo, and then you can just have synthesis, because he's gonna switch yeah. Keldeo out on uh, Ogre Pond. Because I, I don't think yeah. Ogre Pond has any chance of sweeping really, so I, I think actually using Ogre Pond as the Keldeo check is pretty viable. Uh, I, I would try and look into that, and I would also maybe run Spikes, because uh, uh, Mochin's removal is uh, Sand Slash, and no one's really tried to set up hazards on him before with only having Sand Slash's hazard removal. So, uh, try running, like, Spice Synthesis Ogre Pond. I think it might actually, uh, hold some value for the Scizors. Yeah, I... I think this is a strong one in favor of Moochin. Just because, like, I feel like Pittsburgh really needs, like, AV fully defensive Blastoise. Which is flip turn, rapid spin. Just so he has something to switch in on this, because... I. Yeah, Wellspring is not bad, but if if it, it's if it's like max HP, max speed, that Secret Sword probably does like seventy damage to it with specs, and then you get a free switch to Zapdos, and then his ground is Dug Trio, so then you can just vault out every time. So you're just giving up so much momentum there, no matter what you do. 
because uh, there's all like again you could try to play around it with Petron and Wellspring, but you're going to get a turn wrong eventually, and you're just losing a lot of momentum. I think that I Petron's one of my favorite guys, like it is yours, but yeah, I don't think this is a great game for it only because Muck also sits on it pretty hard. It's not going to be able to hit it if it it can't. You can figure probably Skarmory and Muck are both going to be in this game, so if it could just be a toxic spammer, that would be pretty good. But Muck is like a pretty easy switch into this, and it won't take much from Shadow Ball unless like you're setting up on it, which could be okay, I guess. Yeah, it could be um, nasty blood, I guess. Yeah, and uh, like I don't think most that like, you could run the mixed the mixed Toro seems okay. I, I'm a big Flamigo fan, but with both Zapdos and Skarmory, both probably going to come because. Uh, Zapdos is just such a good switch into uh, Wellspring. Um, and so Skarmory, like, you just make him mess with him with which move. And then, again, because you can't figure he's going to break Doug Trio again, especially got not against this type of team. So he's going to get free Volt switches everywhere. Uh, like I said, Darkrai can always win. So if it gets the nasty plot up, maybe it runs, I don't know, Blunder Policy Hypnosis Nasty Plot. And just sweeps. That might be a somewhat decent set, but I don't know. I don't. I don't like this game for Pittsburgh. I don't really see much of any advantage he has outside the Dark Rye. And even then, once that gets chipped, like you said, it's just going to die to any of the priority moves. Yeah. I think this is like a sixty-five thirty-five game, Muchin. Yeah, I, I agree that it's more in Muchin's favor. I think Muchin will come up with a really strong game plan for this game. Uh, I I think I'll go sixty forty, just because I do think like. Uh, that Wellspring set that I said I like that. I like Tauros and I like Darkrai. I really like Darkrai. I, I, I think Darkrai, uh, if Muchin doesn't like come super prepared for it, is going to be very, very devastating for him. Um, yeah. I do agree with what you said with the hazards. That's what I was considering doing, and it turns out that's what I should have done when I played Muchin. Uh, he has the ability to throw the spikes in this game, because the Wellspring will come in and if it's going to give the free switches to Zapdos with the defensive set, at least you yeah. get the value out of throwing the spikes. Yeah, just spike. Just spike when he goes Zapdos. And then uh, you can switch out after. You know, Rotom Heat, if he volts, that's like, it's a it's a shame, but there's really nothing you can do. And then he goes back to Keldeo, probably. I mean, we're sequencing the whole game. He goes back to Keldeo, and then you're back to a guessing game with whether he's going to go yeah. for the fighting move or whether he's going to go for the water move. Yeah, it's not a great... Uh not a great situation so yeah i'm gonna go 60 40 in favor of moochin and we'll move on to the next game all right next up we got uh the charleston chestnuts uh are zero and two after two uh losses but two losses that i would say weren't necessarily bad losses to the cleft keys and the durants so they are now zero and two um versus the luscious low bunnies who are uh two and oh uh plus eight Top of the uh, scoreboard right now after an impressive 5 <laughs> victory against the Flygons. So, uh, when I looked at this matchup, the first thing I thought is that there actually, like, isn't any bundle switching. Like, literally none. No. One bundle, two, it KOs everything. Every single Pokemon dies and two hits the bundle. So, um, Mary's going to have to work around that somehow, in my opinion. Because I, I think that's really, really <laughs> devastating. I also think, like, Miss Magius, the, the Ghost Resist is Hydreigon. That's a Terra Fairy Miss Magius. So, it, it, one bad call from Mary, and th this Miss Magius looks very, very devastating for her as well. Uh, the, the offensive th threats on the uh, Chesnaut side are just very, very uh, problematic, in my opinion, for Mary. I kind of like the, the way they look for... Uh, Charleston at the moment. Mary does have some uh, very dangerous threats herself, though, obviously. You know, the Hydreigon, we saw how good it was last week. I think, like, the answer to Hydreigon, uh, you, you've got Wochi on there, it's Terra Fairy, so you can come in on the dark move and you can Terra Fairy, and all of a sudden it's kind of like sitting there forever. Uh, Blaziken obviously always has a chance to do something, especially if it's like mixed with Overheat, then it can actually do some like really damage to a Dawn fan. Um, I think that this might be a bit of a uh, problematic game for uh, for uh, Enamorous. I, I, I think there's a, a few uh, key resists on uh, Charleston's side. 
Especially because Elamorous uh, is the uh, berry on the team against the Dragology. So uh, Golden Go is probably the switch into Dragology, I have to imagine, in order to not uh, get really uh, absolutely obliterated. What do, what do you think of this matchup? Uh, I mean, we said it last week. Bundle in most games never has a switch in. Like, stab ice moves are really strong like ice plus freeze dry plus hydro pump hits everything in every game so you know whatever don Russ wants to run in this game if he just clicks you know freeze dry over and over and over again he's gonna do some damage to something right because unless it's golden go with recovery coming in uh what did you decide for the um for the uh, uh i went through everything i th I, th I think it's 55 45 don yeah, yeah I like I like the matchup for Don. I, I'm leaning towards Don as well. That that, that was going to be my uh, upset of the week, quote unquote. I'm I'm I like fifty five forty five Don for sure. All right. With that, we're going to move on to the Vancouver Valiants versus the Philadelphia Flygons. Flygons took another tough L uh, this last week. Lost five zero to the Low Punnies and their Hydreigon. Uh, Valiants managed to scrape away with a win after um, getting four kills with Annihilate against the Sunnyside Sweet uh, Screamtails. Now, the Sunnyside Screamtails. So, um, looking at this matchup, uh, I, I don't love it as much for Valiants as I loved the last two weeks. I think Scizor is really annoying for the uh, offensive Pokemon like Kiram. Or, like, uh, I potentially think, like, uh, Offensive Glamora has value this game, but uh, it really can't, like, be set up just because of uh, Scizor being there with Bullet Punch, which is really annoying for uh, Valiance. I, I think uh, Kilobotrel has a decent value this game because the ground, you know, Blood Moon, its spadef is pretty low. You could probably 2 KO it with Hurricane if you catch it with a Hurricane. So, uh, you know, there is that. That's uh, always value. Uh, Grimmsnarl, I think, is pretty good this game. It, it helps with backs. Uh, it can parting shot everything because there's no dark type on the opposing team. So it's kind of just good for like being a soft check to like everything but Scizor pretty much. Um, I, I, I think like Annihilate's okay. It, it, it has, a, again, like a few issues. Halucha can be kind of annoying for it. Um, and it probably doesn't take, you know, Blood Moon's like amazing from uh, Ursaluna. So... On Flygon's side, I, I think his Pokemon have, like, very few switch-ins, uh, for, like, Valiant's has very few switch-ins for him. So, it, it's like, uh, Blood Moons from Arceluna seem pretty free. There's really not, like, a great switch-in, because Treads is going to be, you know, be taking Earth Powers, which is a bit, uh, unfortunate. Okay. Uh, Bex Caliber, the answer is probably, like, Vaporeon, but, uh, it's really not a great answer. Okay. It can be kind of problematic no. for, uh, him. So, I think Bex Caliber has, like, great sweeping potential this week, potentially. Okay. Um, like Iron Moth, uh, the the answer it, it, again, it has to be like a twofold, like Vaporeon plus Annihilate or like something like yeah. that. The, the, the dual coverage is just really strong uh, for Flygons, so I, I think Flygons' offensive threats are actually really, uh, really, really good this game. Yeah, um, I feel like, like you said, there's a really strong Moth set in this game. I don't think it's an early game set, but I think it's a late game set if things are checked. And it's like booster special attack agility. With minimal chip on these things. There's not like just dazzling gleam fire move. Uh, yeah, I mean, unless he keeps Glamora till the end of the game, but that's not usually what happens with Glamora, right? This might be the week Valiant really needs the screens because he's taking so much damage from all of these attacks. Like if, if Flygun's just leads Blood Moon and clicks Blood Moon. There's there's not really great counterplay to that on the other side if it's not like uh like Treads once it can come in and take a Blood Moon but it's not really going to hurt blood. It's so weird every time we do this that the name of the move is the same name as the Pokemon. But the the bear isn't going to take much damage from Treads uh especially if it's AV like if they just run AV Blood Moon this week. That's kind of crazy. I think this might be the uh, week that Volcarona needs to try to do something behind the screens. Um, I think maybe it with can. Energy Ball it can get through the Slow King. I think that might be the best bet because uh, 
Lygons look like he has a strong early game. Uh, Scizor is going to be everywhere doing stuff. Like, the downside of Scizor in this game is, like, you don't want to just be U-turning into Ape and giving it boosts. So maybe or, this is or you turning into this yeah. week or something. Or you turning into Volcarona. Yeah, or you turning into yeah. Volcarona and getting burned. Yeah, I think Scizor has rock moves though. I uh, think Scizor tomb? has rock moves. I, I would, I would, yeah, I would it'll, assume it'll, it has tomb. Yeah, that'll kill Volcarona. Yeah, that'll kill Volcarona in one hit. Yeah, especially with technician. But um, um, Knackle Stack might force Vaporeon to be Covert Cloak because. You know, I guess uh, Annihilate can come in and get that boost, so maybe Annihilate's not a, a terrible switch in uh, on a Soul Cure, but it still doesn't want to take the damage. Um, so if it's like Knackle Stack, maybe just Utility with Rocks and Soul Cure and Recover, and it just keeps getting Rocks up and Treads can never come in on it. Um, what advantages does Valiant have? Like, is can we deal with Special Kyrim here at all? Not really. Not no. really well. Um... There's so no actual just... answers to the Kyrim. Uh I think special and even physical, if it's like physical with earth power. Yeah. Uh, I, I think... And then do we do we have an SD Bax Caliber check? No. Um, Grim Snarl? Not really. So it, it'd SD, be like getting so what, 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 it, like SD yeah. on the Grim Snarl, Grim Snarl like reflects or thunder waves, something like that. And then yeah. parting shots out, so you're plus one instead of plus two. And then it goes like Vaporeon yeah. wishes, goes back to Grim Snarl to get the health back, something like that. Parting shots again. Yeah, this is an interesting game. I think this is the game Valiance has to go the full setup route with the screens because he's not going to out offense this team. I mean, he could bring Specs, Kiram, and just do damage, but then that always Scizor comes in on that the next turn and threatens stuff out. And Abe can switch in on Scizor. Like he has switch ins to Scizor, but then if he goes Vaporeon, this thing SDs, U turns out, does a bunch of damage. So I think I think I like the uh, Flygon. This Flygon's had two really bad matchups the first two weeks. Um, I think his team is better with Baxcalibur, even though in a vacuum, perhaps Gouging Fire is a better Pokemon. I think this is easier to just pick up and use, and he needed immediate offense. And he picked up Iron Moth and Baxcalibur, and he has Blood Moon. So we talked about in the team preview at the beginning of the season, we said that Valiance doesn't have a lot of immediate offense. So it's he's going to have a challenge in this game, I think, if he doesn't have the screens up, just not dying before he can set up. So, um, yeah, I agree. I think because, yeah, I think because Valiant, even though he's one and one, I haven't thought he's played well in either of the games in general. Like, I thought the last game, Mug probably played better, but just made some unusual plays and instead of just earthquaking uh, i understand why they did that but i think there was a pretty easy way for them to win that game so i'm gonna give philly the this might be the first one we ever disagree on i'm gonna give philly this the slight nod here like 55 45 because if he's gonna win this has got to be the week because i feel like this is heavily like on paper in his favor yeah i'm gonna go uh 60 40 in favor of the valiance i see a line and I won't fully disclose it. I, I see a way to get this done. Um, it, it, it requires... I agree, it's very difficult. I, uh, I think Blood Moon is very challenging for the Valiants in this game. Um, I, I think, you I know... Think we, I, I think yeah, Cyclozart... Yeah, I think what we need to see from Flygon, just because he's had Blood Moon in both, div in both divisions the last two seasons, and even sometimes... People play set up Blood Moon too much. Guys, just attack with this thing. Like, you don't always need to try to keep bring, it alive. Bring, just bring, go two for one. Bring choice specs. Bring choice specs Blood Moon this yeah. way. There's no reason not to. If, if, even if Treads comes in and it's like Spidap, it's going to take 40 from the Blood Moon. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 like, I think Moth, I, I think all three of the main offensive threats are very dangerous. And I think Scizor is really annoying for, like, the like, like i think rock polish meteor beam glamora actually is really good this game outside of scissor existing but um yeah. because scissor exists it's kind of problematic um i think cyclozar is really annoying for valiance because if cyclozar wasn't here he could just set up all the hazards in the world and the game becomes a lot easier um yeah I, I think maybe uh he could do that even so and just go annihilate on the rapid spins um that that could actually be a line that i see happening is just set yeah, up as yeah. much hazards as possible and uh 
go go for it essentially um yeah i mean his best the valiant's best thing might be to play this like the team looks like it's supposed to set up hazards then set up screens then set up that might be just what he does what the team looks like it's supposed to do and hope that flyguns can't kill him before he has an unkillable volcarona or annihilate because yeah. uh in the first in the first six turns i feel like we'll know what's going to happen with this game because either valiance is going to have a plan to survive a bunch of blood moons and sd ice shards and iron moth big hits and then he'll win in a long game with hazards and setup or he's going to get two pokemon dead in the first five turns and the game's just going to be over but ladies and gentlemen this is the first time me and alakazam have, have disagreed on a game yet yep all right Moving on to the next game. We have the New York Malavars versus the Sunnyside Screamtails. Uh, the Screamtails, uh, as previously mentioned, lost to the Valiants, mainly thanks to an Annihilate. And uh, Malamars also lost last week to a uh, Terra Ground Zangus and uh, some some pretty creative plays from the Embors. So uh, looking at this matchup, we finally have... A real Floatzel answer, so it's not like Floatzel can just terrorize this game. You know, Alomomola does exist; it is here, so um, that can be kind of problematic for the Malamars. I do think Arcaladon uh, looks pretty strong here. Uh, obviously, Ting Lu is going to be an issue. Uh, it, it can kind of come in, but uh, you, uh, the body presses will eventually start doing damage. Uh, as the defense raises, maybe uh, it could even be a self-raising defensive set uh, this week potentially. Um, I, I think you know the likes of uh, Iron Crown hold some value here. Uh, pretty good Glow King answer, pretty good Scream Tail answer. You know can kind of come in on like the likes of Altaria or Glaceon. All those like bottom tier guys, Iron Crown deals with decently well. Obviously, again, Ting Lu a bit problematic. Lander Astarian's a bit annoying for. Uh, your team unless uh rillaboom comes but you do have pelipper i guess uh that's a pretty decent answer obviously don't want to get caught by a stone edge but um i i, I think like uh Meowskarata isn't uh too terrible despite all the waters you know avalanche Sui is here that could be the answer if uh, need be and also our caladon obviously you know if he's triple axling you're getting a defense boost three times that's pretty uh beneficial uh, the immunities to Regieleki are really annoying because you really want Regieleki to uh, break the Elamomola. So um, the fact that he has three immunities to electricity uh, can be uh, kind of annoying, somewhat problematic. So maybe instead to break the Elamomola, Rillaboom has to come. But I don't really know how I feel about Rillaboom either. I think this is actually a very annoying game for you. Uh, what do you think of this matchup? Uh, I've been thinking about this for the last two days, and it's not something fun to think about. Not that I'm not going to get, oh, like, a sunny side. I don't think is ever going to overwhelm anybody, although they'll win at least a couple of games this season with some weird setup sets, even, like, on turn one. Uh, the downside of the sunny side team this week is there's, like, four or five guys that are just locked into, like, a what they have to do. Right, so Mola has to come with like Rocky Helmet, maybe leftovers, but it has to it has to come. It has to be full defense or it gets two hit KO'd by Floatzel, right? So that has to come. You figure Ting Lu has to come uh yeah, to Ting, stop the Reggie Electric. I think Ting is really good, it has to come for sure. Yeah, it has to come, right? So Mola has to come, Ting Lu has to come. Galler probably has to come, one because it can change the weather, and then if it doesn't come, then you're just getting hit by hurricanes on all these things forever. Um, I think Meowskarata has to come because it's the only thing with speed. And it has to be the triple axle set. Again, if it's not outspeeding uh, Tornado's Theory, and then it's just you turning all over the place and killing everything. And I think those four are just absolutely locked in. And I don't know that you can... I, I think Lando could have a good set, but I don't know that you want two grounds against the rain team. That doesn't seem very good. Um... So I think they have some really good guys, but I think they're locked into Galar, Meowskarata, Alomomola, Ping Lu, for sure. Um, and then the other two, I guess, are, are floating. You could get Hydration, Fion in the rain. They'll probably like that set with just Rest, Take Heart, and I guess Energy Ball and Water Move seems pretty good. 
uh, Jolteon because it's faster than um, Therian could probably come. Uh, but I think those four are locked in. Yeah, it's going to be an annoying game to play. But if if Sunnyside doesn't bring any of those guys, and I'm going to talk about myself in the third person, Malamars was to just bring basic rain, they'll get run over. So they have to have those four guys. So I think that's the downside is that we know what the matchup is going to be. It's almost like it's a prepared game playing against each other. And it's just what nuanced moves can you make on the sets. But um, this... As I played the Moochin game last week, I realized, it, I think I said in our, our thing last week, because I usually don't give numbers on my own game. I said, I don't think this is going to be as easy as it looks. This one actually looks hard, but the downside of Mug's team, because it is kind of semi-stall, if one of the pieces falls, like if Mola dies to something weird, it's not going to be good. So they have, they're have they on a razor's edge this week. Yeah, I, I think like when you look at the matchup, maybe it feels like Screamtails has the advantage, but like you said, uh, I think it kind of collapses the second one thing goes down. It's going to come down to a lot of positioning and a lot of deciding what the first least important Pokemon to go down is, right? So uh, yeah. it, it, it really will come down to that. I, I, I think I trust the Malamars more in situations like that. So I'll lean ever slightly 55-45 Malamars just because I think that's kind of the situation they're, the game is going to find itself in. Yep. All right. And moving on to the next game, we have Agrons versus Norwalk. Norwalk barely beating Dracos 1-0 last week. Uh, and Agrons lost to Klefkies, uh 2-0 uh, last week. Two games where... It, uh, two games that were kind of interesting because I think Crook actually played really well against Neuburns and probably got most turns right and still lost just because I think the matchup was really bad and he missed a really important gunk shot. And then uh, Agron's uh, lost pretty much, uh, not solely because of this, but I mean, he got locked pretty bad. He, he, he got crit, he missed a, a, a Draco, which directly led to Dragapult dying. He got a defense drop, which directly led to Clefable dying. You know, a, a lot of things went wrong for the Agrons in that game. Uh, he yep. got hit by three Hurricanes in a row, which is a very tough uh, thing to come back from. So, uh, looking at this matchup, I think, like, the, the likes of Dragapult are looking really, really strong here. You know, uh... Whether it's like sub uh, with like status and then hex, I think that could be really problematic for uh, the Neuverns. I I think uh, you know Quick uh could be pretty strong here, even though he has unaware, because the two unaware mods are still weak to water. Uh, it might be actually it, a. It has to be water absorb Claude. Sire, it might right? be water absorb Claude Sire, but it could still be triple axle Quick Wobble. You know what I mean? So it's. Yeah. If it's Triple Axle, Quick Wobble on Water Absorb, Claude Sire, and then Skeledurge is the Unaware Mon, uh, I have a feeling Quick Wobble could actually like literally just boost past, not necessarily boost past, power yeah. past Skeledurge and still sweep. You know what I mean? I still think yeah. like, Quick Wobble yeah. has a line here. This is like the yeah. only situation where I think like Noir Burns could get swept if Ditto doesn't come. Because obviously if Ditto comes, that kind of goes out the window. Oh, yeah. Um, I think Muckalola looks pretty good here. It can take one hit from Valiance and kill it. It can, you know, kind of sit on Dirge at least a little bit. Uh, it, it can sit on yeah. Drapple a little bit. Uh, it can take a hit from Metagross. Uh, I think Earthquake probably doesn't one hit at least. And it can knock it off. It probably will have weakness policy though. You know, I think Gliscor with spikes could be very devastating this game because, you know, the hazard removal is Hitmontop. I think Hitmontop could actually come with like Rapid Spin, Triple Axle, Close Combat, that kind of thing. Uh, obviously yep. Cliff Fable could be problematic. I think Cliff Fable with like a, a cosmic power set maybe could be kind of interesting this game. I don't hate that idea. Obviously Volbeat's here and Volbeat can encore anything. I, I think Volbeat actually could do something this game as like a Thunder Waver for the Dragapult and Quick Quable and then like an encore on like potential setup uh, Cliff Fable. Um, you know, Electrode Hisui... It's like all right. Claude Zyre is obviously there. I, I, if it's Terra Ice, I would bet uh, the move does about forty percent. Uh, and obviously, yeah, High Drapple. Kind of... Yeah, High Drapple's there again. Terra Ice. I bet it doesn't kill though. Um, I think the Dun Sparse is pretty good here. You know, uh, Earth Power Boom Burst. That set I think is uh, looking pretty good against uh, Agrons if it's Calm Mind. 
Um, I don't dislike Heatran, but, you know, there's Skeletors in my Lodic, which are pretty problematic for, like, uh, the fire moves that Heatran wants to throw off. So, yeah. um, I actually don't hate the matchup for Noiverns, but I do slightly lean uh, towards the, the the offensive power. Or, Agrox doesn't even necessarily have great offensive power, but I just think in this matchup, Pol and Qu Quavo are better than Valiant and, uh, like, Metagross slash the Dunsparce. And I think the ability to get hazards up is easier for Agrons, even though I think both will probably end up trying to get them up. Yeah, I think when I see what I just look at this, I think Mixed Dragapult just 6 0s the whole team. Like, if it's just like sub DD Dragon Dart Shadow Ball. I don't really know how he beats that. I, you'd have to look at how much damage, like, especially defensive Skeletor does. Maybe it needs to be. And, like, I genuinely don't know how he beats that set. Um, I mean, it, unaware Claude probably doesn't take a lot from either move. It probably does like 35. Well, yeah, well, it, I feel like it has to be Water Absorb Claude Sire. And if he's just like max it. And I don't know. There's definitely some mixed Dragapult set that wins this game very easily with minimal chip. So, like you said, he gets yeah. the hazards up and with uh, Gliscor, and it's a Gliscor, so it's going to sit there forever. It's probably faster than hitting on top with no speed investment anyway. So it's just going to sit there on it. It'll toxic it when it rapid spins. It'll protect. It'll set the spikes back up again. Yeah, my talk um, would have to be like jolly, almost max speed to outspeed it. Because Glass is yeah, at 95, so I like, think. It's, yeah, it's at, he's at such a disadvantage in that part. And I think, like you said, there are two really good sweeping sets. We might have to see Marvel scale Flame Orb Milotic this week to have some like bulk on both sides. Um, if... If Noiverns is going to play around these mixed sets, because Dragon Ball's the best mixed attacker in the game, and he's trying to run, like, hard stall, essentially, with all these things. So he better be AV, high Drapple, max defense. He better be, like, physically defensive Claude Sire. Because if it's, like, Dragon Fang, Dragon Darts with some attack investment, I can't imagine Claude Sire takes that super well. Um, yeah. So... It, I, I, I'm not going to look it up right now, but I, I'm sure there's some way to to fudge the numbers where it comes close to two-hit KOing, and it probably won't break Dragapult's sub, because if it tries to break the sub, it's not going to... It's just going to die on the next hit. So, I, I guess um, the I other think, way but, is, like, Terra Fairy, Calm Mind, and Dunsparce could... Uh, yeah. That specific set only. It could uh, yeah. wall it pretty hard, because you get the spit F boost, yeah. and all of a sudden... Uh, you're immune to that's drag. the thing when you said it because I, I was thinking that Dragapult set while you were talking and then when you said Volbeat I'm like he might have to bring Volbeat not to lose to just substitute Kukwavel and substitute Dragapult yeah because I think Volbeat also of those beats things those, yeah. win the game um but I, I, but... I will lead Agrons because I do think his avenues are just way easier because I the Noiverns have to bring like a Volbeat angle or like some Dunsparce angle I do think the Dunsparce is good here yeah. I like the Dunsparce yeah yeah, the Dunsparce, I think if it sets up, like maybe if it's max defense, calm mind, like you said, boom burst, earth power. And then Terra Blast, like maybe, be... last move. Yeah, that, that seems like it could be pretty good. Or um, just roost, honestly. It'll probably... Yeah, it'll probably just get toxic, though. Yeah, by, um, by Gliscor. So, yeah, I, I think this is a... It's not... Uh, we we I don't think we've if this is is strange to say about somebody who is two and zero, but I don't think we've seen great play from Noiverns yet, and he's playing against one of the more consistent players. And I think the best person on Abbotsford's team is, has a is great good. great matchup, and yeah. it's like the best guy in the league. So um, it's going to be tough for noiverns with the type of team he play has needs to play every turn almost perfectly because as soon as he gets out of position he's gonna get if he gets out of position against paul or kukwavel or there's probably some sweep and clefable set like you said defensive boosts with stored power that get through claude eventually um i like agrons i think he'll find a way to pretty easily win this game yeah. just because i'm, I'm feeling 65 um, 35 or 70 30 for the aggro i'll go uh, yeah I, I was i was thinking 70 30 just because mixed attack now he has valiant so booster speed valiant is definitely not bad here at all like some mixed valiant set yeah. but um i'm gonna still i'm gonna lean aggro on 70 30 for me all right moving on to i believe the last game of the week we have two oh and two teams the norwalk 
or the New Jersey Dracos versus the Clombrook Kyogres. Uh, Dracos, uh, th that's incorrect. He lost to, um, no, that's right. He Barry, lost to, right? He, he lost to Norwalk. No, th 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 that's yeah. right. He did lose to Norwalk. He lost to Norwalk 0-1. Um, and, uh, Klombrook lost to Scizors 0-2. Both played, uh, uh, interestingly, I, I think Dracos actually kind of played right. He played well. Uh, he, he played pretty aggressive. He was doubling with Crocodile. You know, he set up a sub on the switch. He got that turn right. He got a lot of turns right, if I'm being honest. He just, um... He missed a gunk, and I think his team really let him down. Deoxys Speed did like 40% with Shadow Ball to Metagross. It was very pathetic. It kind of shows that Deoxys Speed without the nasty plot, I mean, it's just not that strong, in my opinion. Yeah. It, it doesn't do it, it doesn't do a lot of damage. So like it, it, it can't uh it, it, it can't even do like 50% to a Metagross. Um and then like Clombrook, he played like not terrible. He only lost 0-2. He, he I, I think he messed up with Raging Bolt a bit. He switched it out when he really didn't need to. His El Creamy did get crit, I will say that. If his El Creamy didn't get crit, he probably uh, like had some sort of sweeping angle because he was plus two defense, yeah. plus two spadef, plus two special attack. And it really didn't look like Scizors had an actual answer for it. He tried to yeah. encore it when you can't encore El Creamy. Um, yeah. So that was unfortunate. Looking at the actual matchup itself, um, you know, Deoxys Speed uh, looks pretty good because it can have, you know, obviously fighting coverage. Uh, the Sucker Punches are going to be blocked by the uh, Psychic Terrain, so King Gambit can't sucker the Deoxys Speed, so then it can just spam. This is the Terrain, this is the terrain Extender week, Draco. Bring the Terrain Extender this week. Yeah, Terrain Extender... It'll stop Bolt, it'll stop Gambit from going for all those priority moves, which is nice. Um, Primarina looks like alright this game, I think. You know, you can bring it in on Gambit, maybe. Take a hit, get a big hit off back. Um, I, I think you need like a psychic move for Tentacruel, but you can bring it in on Mian Xiao. Mian Xiao's gonna have a poison jab, but you kill it in one hit for sure. Uh, Sneasler, actually, uh, now that I'm looking at it, looks pretty devastating for the opponent. He doesn't have, like, a super great Sneasler ch check. Tentacruel resists both the stabs, but it really doesn't yeah. take it very well. Um, yeah. I think Jersey's offensive firepower might be a little too much. Uh, I will say, like, like Heart Flame is pretty good. Heart Col Flame is, yeah, Heart Flame is my concern. I think Heart Flame sweeps the whole team. Yeah, it'd have to be, like, uh, Colossal would have to try and wall it, which is uh, going to be yeah. problematic. I, 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 I think, like, Colossal does an okay job of that. And then obviously you have Crocodile with Intimidate to like get it to minus one. But I, I think Heart Flame is like the key for Clombrook trying to win here. Um, I, I think Al Creamy probably can't do it uh, by itself this game. Uh, he'll have some form of like uh, either hazard switching or he'll just have like Gunshot or Sneasler because I think he, he's probably going to be like Terra Steel. So he can also predict like close combat or something. Um,. I, I, I lean in the offensive direction of Draco slightly, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm trying to see what... Uh... So, Klonbrook's whole game plan needs to be around setting up Hearth Flame, right? So, if he gets uh, the trail... So, what's the set? Swords Dance... Trailblaze, Ivy, Ivy Cudgel, Cudgel... Trailblaze... He needs, he needs Trailblaze or else he just gets revenged by Dio Speed. Yeah, and then he Horn... He horn leeches Colossal over and over again because he can't get burned. Um, but I mean, if Colossal is a rock move, doesn't he just... I think Colossal is actually a better check than we're giving credit for to this yeah. Ogre Pond. Um, yeah. Um, so he, do, he doesn't have... Uh, Clomberg has one really strong guy. Um, his other advantage is Primarina, the, fa the Draco resist is weak to electric. So, Raging Bolt has had great matchups all of these weeks. Um, Klomberg, I think you got... I think the last week it was Booster Energy again. I think you got to start bringing some specs, man. Just start playing some 50-50s and try to win the game. That's just that's mm. just what I think, right? Because the ground is Crocodile. It doesn't want to take a Drake. It could be AV. We, we mentioned this AV uh, Intimidate set. I think it's pretty good. Um, I think if he's it's, AV, it's he's taking that... 70 from Draco, if I had to guess. Yeah, it's a... So, like, uh, 
Kyogre's. I, I think you need to, uh, in the, in our, if you want to call it metagame, in this uh, PBO league, that, that booster energy set, it is good, but that's a late game set. That's not an early game set, in and my you, opinion. You need if your you bolt wanna, to if be... You throw, yeah. it, it, just the way your team's constructed, yeah. you need your bolt to be mid and early game, so King Gambit can be late game. You can't have both be late game, yeah. right? So, and King Gambit's yeah. baked in always late game. So, uh, like you, you can bring it in as a resist, but really you want it late. So, Bolt yeah. has the potential to be mid and early in a way that Gambit doesn't, because it can you just have the option to not run the booster item. So, just do yeah. that and use Bolt as early and mid offensive pressure, and then uh, Gambit as the cleaner that it excels. Yeah, and then uh, reverse the last. Yeah, there's week. not a lot. Yeah, there's not a lot that. Uh... Most of the things seem to be in um, Draco's favor, except for those couple of things. But you got what you got to say, Kyogre. Like we said, he always has a chance. The games will probably be close because his top two guys, Hearthflame and Bolt, they have good matchups. Yeah. Um, even if the terrain is up, like Bolt, if he gets the correct prediction on Draco or Thunderbolt, it's going to do some a lot of damage to something. Mm -hmm. Right. I think Mianxiao Scarf Mianxiao is okay because there's not a lot of great bulk here. And the bulk is all weak to fighting moves. I will say this, Clawbro. So uh, in DD, both I've used it and uh, I've seen it played. It doesn't usually last, so still bring uh, Thunderclap. Still have it on the set yeah. because late. It it, 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 if Bolt yeah. is there late game, it, it could become really clutch. So make sure you yeah. have it, even if uh, it's come, even if uh, terrain's coming, because in DD doesn't last usually. It usually doesn't stay yeah. around forever. Uh, so I think defensive Swampert is okay in this game. Yeah, the only, like, um, Ogre Pond is the only thing that's really, like, great against it, and I don't think Ogre Pond wants to come. It could be, yeah. like, Sword Stance, Super Power, Grass Move, uh, Play Rough, and then that set's decent. Yeah. That's, like, not a bad set at all. Um, if he just wants to make sure he has something to hit Swampert, that's probably the set I would run. Yeah, like... Um, I think it has to be Defensive Swamper. That's his best Sneasler check, because at least it resists one move, and it can always threaten it back. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm Draco's, I I bring the terrain to block the priority. I don't think you should try to sweep with Sneasler. Just hit hard from the start and just keep switching. Just keep switching out. Just click Moonblast, click U-turn on Sneasler. Bring Banded Get Sneasler. The, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, Band or Scarf Sneasler is almost always the best set. He doesn't even I, need... I, yeah, I he... this thing to the he doesn't yeah. need Scarf. Bring Bandit. Bring Bandit yeah. Sneasler. Bring U-Turn yeah. Gunk Shot Close Combat, and you're kind of cooking. You're, you're just cooking the whole squad. And worst to worst, worst comes to worst, if Sneasler actually has Trick or Switcheroo or one of those moves. Yeah, Switcheroo. And you don't need the fourth move. So just, it's almost always the best set trick, I'm telling you. It's almost always better with, like, just Band or Scarf. In this game, Ben's right, it's Banned. I bet but if you're Banded, you two-hit KO Tentacruel with Close Combat. I would, I would bet. Yeah, Tentacruel, Tentacruel is only special to tank. It's not a. It yeah. has low HP and low defense. Um, but yeah, I, I'm gonna give it Draco 60-40 in this game. But yeah, I mean, there's I'll, definitely I'll, a lot I'll where hard play wins. I yeah. agree with 60-40 on the Dracos. All right, and with that, we are done with PBO Week Three Pickums. Thank you for watching. We are out.